All right, so with racing coming to an end in most of the Northern Hemisphere, I think it's an important time to sort of go over what you did right, what you did wrong in racing. So I'm going to go through five things, which I think a lot of people do. Um, this is some online race footage that I've found. Um, you'll recognize some of the people. You might not recognize all of them. And uh, one of them is actually my, some of my mistakes that I've done as well. Um, unfortunately, in the UK, you can't film uh, in races, but that's changing next year. So I'm going to be filming a lot of races, uh, which will be exciting. So anyway, this is the first one, which I think is pretty important. Being at the front in the neutral slash, uh, yeah, when it's rainy and hilly, because you'll see in a minute. So anyway, he's, this lad is not in the neutral, um, and you can see, like, he's not near the front at all, which is fine, but in Australia, you know, it's closed road, it's not closed road, so if you're on the left-hand side, it's very hard to move up, but you can see here, he could move up here, and I think it's really important to be in the front when it's wet, when it's hilly, because people are going to crash, people are going to have gaps on the descents, you can see here, he's not confident descender, this gap is opening up, that means when you come down to it, um, you can see, look at this, like, look how many gaps there are left, right, and center. If you're not near the front, you're going to have issues. This guy goes straight on here, can't make the corner. So I think when it's hilly, when it's wet, you really want to stay near the front from the neutral and just make sure you have good position. Sometimes you can get away with it when it's like a flat race or, you know, nothing's going to happen. But I think on a race like this, you really got to be near the front. Um, right. So this next one um, is, is something slightly different. Um, it's actually when to pull in a break. So this guy's going to break. Um, in the race, you can see like looking pretty strong and here you can see like, okay, this looks good. Right. And you think, okay, we should be pulling, but what you can see from the bunch, and this is the key thing when you're in the break is, are uh, have they sat up? Because at this point you've really got to drill it. You've got to look around. You've got to be like, right, these people are doing that. And when you see this, this is not hard enough. If you, if the lad here who's filming it is not on their wheel, it means they're not going hard enough. So this is a, a break in my opinion. You won't, won't, wouldn't want to drill it in. Uh, it's not going hard enough. Like this person on the front here needs to be really whacking it. You're not going to get away if you're sat upright and people like three wheels back are free. You should be on the verge of death, like three wheels back. And in a minute, I think they're going to go behind. And now there's no gap. People are trying to get across. It's, it's just not what, like you can see everyone is chasing like, and it's not going hard enough. Uh, there's no point going through it. I feel like the brakes occur because number one, people sit, sit up, right? People are like, it's too, it's, it's just not the right, like, you know, I, I don't want to be in the brake, whatever. People sit up, the brake goes, or you go by strength and it goes so hard in the brake, people can't get across. And both of those things fail. People went, didn't sit up behind and it wasn't going hard enough in the brake. So this one, don't pull. And it's, a, it's an error that people do. They pull so hard in the brake and it's just not going to work. And you want to save your energy, wait for another time. So that's, that's mistake number two. Um, We'll actually go to my footage now, which is a classic mistake that I do the whole time, which is pulling too hard on the brake. So this is what my friend Ollie actually filmed um, a little while back. You can see this is basically, we'll go on this a little bit more. This is literally from the gun. It went nuclear. This circuit is pretty technical. You can see I'm second wheel here, actually in pretty good position. Um, and it's like a hairpin, so like two hairpins basically. So it means it's really technical, but you can see here the brake has been formed. And I said, it's like, what I was saying before, I bridged across and this was the winning break, right? So Charlie gets on around this corner. I'm at the back. This is actually when I was quite strong um, and wasn't useless at riding a bike. Um, and you can see behind, it's all strung out. So people are trying to get across, but you can see here, they're starting to sit up. Now, the thing I did, I just pulled too hard. You can see here, this guy on the front was so strong. He was pulling like an absolute monster. And I was just getting spat. I was actually second wheel here. And to be honest, it was okay. And when I was on his wheel, it was all good. But the issue was I then changed rotations and wasn't on his wheel. And so when he stopped pulling, like you can see now, when I pull off, he's going to pull and he was the strongest guy in the break. So this is more of like two things. But number one of this part in the break is make sure you don't pull after the strongest person in the break. You know, you really want to try and minimize that because then it's easier to sit on because, you know, you haven't just done your turn. And number two is don't go too hard that you get spat from the break, which is exactly what I did. You can see here. I'm pulling some big turns, which is fine. I flick off here, but you'll see um, the next bit, next time round, where am I? Off the bat, because I pulled too much. He did a massive turn, and you can see here I got spat. And real donkey move from myself, and that's the key thing to remember. So, yeah, just don't be an idiot in the break. Don't pull too hard, and make sure you don't sit behind the, the person. Now, this, this clip is actually hilarious, um, mainly because this guy's a lot better at racing than me and a lot stronger than me. It's just wide on the wheel. Just, just not on the wheel here. You can see like it's strung out and like he's not doing any watts. He's doing 47 watts, but he's not on the wheel. 
And this is something that you really have to do. Like here, again, it's like you just want to be on the wheel. You can see, again, like this gap is opening up and he's not on the wheels. Doing 200 watts, fine. But if you were just doing a little bit more, you'd be actually on the wheel and you'd sit so much better. Again, here, look, not on the wheel. And this, like, just kills you. And then you'll see, like, suddenly, like, he's off the front again. And then look, like, in the bunch here, not on the wheel. And you might think, oh, it's 700 watts to get on the wheel instead of, like, 400 to cruise across. But, like, here, he's just burning energy. Just burning energy by not being on the wheel. And I'd say it's something that I really found myself doing. I often just, like, not 100% on the wheel. Just don't mess around. Get on the wheel. Again, we'll, we'll show you more footage here. Not on the wheel. Round the corners, not on the wheel. You know, that's just not good enough. You've got to be on the wheel. You save so much energy. And it's like, you can't be like, okay, you know, if it's a really fast descent, one, two meters is fine. But like, if it's like this on a crit, you've just got to be like, look at everyone else and then look at him. And then look how hard he's going to have to go out the corner. The 600, like, look, look how hard that is. And they're getting all getting a draft. Still not on the wheel. But here, like, see, he's doing 300 watts. You still want to be on 600. You just want to close that gap as quickly as possible. Cam Nichols actually made a video about this. And it was, it's so true. You just need to be on the wheel. Um, and even here, he's not on the wheel. Like, look, that guy is on the right, so he's not on his wheel. So the person who he's wheel he should be on is like a bike length off. Like, what what are you doing? You just got to be on the wheel here. And then here, it's like, you're doing 500 watts to get past everyone, fine. But like, you know, you just, you just really need to be on people's wheels if you're going to be not doing anything. And then he has to close the big gap and it's, it's disastrous. But anyway, I could do a whole video on this, on this race because it's, it's not good. The last one I think is, is harsh, but it is what it is. And it's having confidence to go through gaps. I think it's, it's something that is really easy to see when you're not racing, but we'll watch this race. And to be fair, the lad whose video is, he does admit that he is not good at corner. But you can see here, like, you've got to be thinking, like, am I going to, like, well, how am I going to move up? I'm going outside, going inside. Like, you know, I don't want to be on the inside of this guy or I'm going in the middle. But here, he just doesn't pick either. Like, this situation here, it's like you're either going outside, which is fine, which he doesn't do, or you want to try and just stay in the inside. He lets the inside go. And then here, it's like, again, he's not in the draft of anyone. People are coming up the outside. He's not moving up. And this gap here, like, this is a huge gap, like... You, you've got to be going through a gap like that because what will happen is it will squeeze. But you can see here, like, this is a gap. You could fit through that. And, you know, if you if you watch some of these guys, they'll hop through, like, three, four gaps. This guy's now come up, and he's just lost, like, five, six positions. But he could be there. And then watch where that guy is. Look, he's you can't even see him in the screen anymore. And then this guy's coming up on his left and his right. And to be fair, this is good. Like, he's, he's holding his position through the corner. But then when it comes out again, you see, like, the kick is fine, whatever. But then here, the, he doesn't accelerate enough. Um, and then this guy's handlebars ahead of him. And then he's going to push him out. He's then trying to get to the left-hand side. But you'll see he doesn't really go there. And then someone else comes up on the left. And then there's a gap here that he could fit through. And he doesn't do that. And then, like, before you know it, you lost 30, 30 40 positions. So, again, it, it's just so important that you have to figure out how are you moving up. If you don't think you have the skills to go through the middle, which a lot of people don't want to, fine, you move up on the outside, but then you stay on the outside and you think, okay, every single time I'm going to move up on the outside. It's going to cost me more energy, but I'll be there. But here again, it's like, what's the strategy? What is the strategy? You're just losing wheels. Like, is there, move up on the left, move on the right. Like, I know it might be a hard race, but you know, you've got, you got to just do it around this corner again. It's like, you know, if you'd taken the outside line, um, you'd be where he is and look, he's gained, he's gained two positions on you. And that's in one corner. You think how many corners there are on this race? You know, that's, that's so many corners. So that would be my, my last top tip. It really is, you've just got to think how you're going to move up. And you can't see any of these people again. He is just going backwards. Again, here, like, you know, you've got to be on the wheel, which is similar to the last point. Um, but yeah, so those, those are my points, I guess. Uh, number one is start at the front if it's really technical and wet. I think in most amateur races, you just want to be at the front. Number two, figure out if the brake's actually going to go or not. And if it does, pull. pull. Don't pull too hard because you get spat like me. Um, and also part so part two of this is is try and make sure you optimize the rotations so you're not behind the strongest person. Or if you're really big, make sure you're not behind someone like me who's really small because you'll get no draft. This one is hold the wheel and don't get dropped in corners because it's not good, which is quite obvious. And this one is figure out how you're going to move up. You're going to move up in the middle or the outside. Pick one strategy and go for it 100%. Um, but yeah, cheers for watching. Hope you did enjoy this video. I'll see you in the next one.